Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji guys. This uh, video here today is the top features of our new interchangeable lens camera, the XE1, the baby brother of the X Pro One. Billy's going to go through basically the top features with this, and uh, we'll come back and see at the end. This is a look at the XE1 with the 18 to 55 millimeter f2.8 f4 zoom lens uh, that's available for this camera. It's available as a kit for the camera at around $1,400. Uh, the kit comes in, of course, either black or the uh, the two-tone silver and and black, which is a more retro looking. I personally actually like the black because it's it's a lot more uh, less noticeable in, in in the type of shooting that I like to do. Um, looking at the zoom lens again, it's almost the same size as the 60 mm f um, uh, f 2.4 lens uh, that's available for for the Fuji camera. Uh, because, but this is obviously a zoom lens, as you can see, it's very smooth. Uh, you got metal constructions, aluminum constructions on that, so again, it's quite uh, uh, silent in that sense. You have your manual focus ring in the front, and it's quite smooth as well. Uh, you zoom, and you have the markings from 18 to 55 mil, uh, of course, equivalent to um, 18 to 55, sorry. You got the aperture dial. It's a variable aperture dial. As you can see, there's no markings, unlike the other XF lenses. Uh, and that's because uh, it's a variable aperture on this on this lens. So at wide, uh, it, the fastest aperture is an f2.8, and at full tel tele, uh, the fastest aperture is an f4. So you wouldn't really have to have uh, real markings on here. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but it, to keep it simple, uh, it's, it's really no markings. You have to look on the back of the camera to tell you what the aperture settings you have that are shot. Now there's a couple of settings on this lens. You have the on and off for the optical image stabilization. It offers about four stops of uh, uh, improvement uh, without having, obviously, OIS at all. And you can turn it off or on. And generally, you have it on for the majority of shots unless you're using a tripod, in which case uh, you don't want to add extra movement to your shot. You know it's very steady, so you can turn it to the off position in that type of situation. Um, you have this extra setting here, and it's basically the aperture uh, selector mode. You have automatic, which is set to A. And you have, of course, the manual aperture. And uh, generally, I prefer shooting an aperture priority, so I always have it on the uh, manual aperture controls itself. Uh, other than that, that's basically the zoom lens. It does come with the, uh, the lens hood, as you can see here. There's marking on the lens hood uh, with the dots right there, and you can kind of line it together. And um, if you find that spot uh, right, you can clip back in place. And of course, it's reversible as well, so you can actually take that and reverse it in, put it in a lens cap, and make it more portable for storage. So uh, let me just attach that back on again. And then I'm going to stick it right back onto the uh, camera itself. So again, matching the, uh, the red dots, clicks in place. And there you go. You got a camera. And as you can see, this is the first zoom that's available for the XE1. It's a nice looking zoom, a nice size, high quality. It's not, even though we call it a kit, it's not really a kit. And it's something that, uh, to me, I find a, a key feature of buying this camera is, is having this available high quality zoom lens. The X-E1 offers uh, the same LCD screen as the X100, which is a 2.8 inch uh, 460K screen. Uh, even though the, the number sounds a little bit low, it actually is of a very high quality. You really can't compare some screens even though they're the same, uh, um, same um, specifications. Uh, in addition to the screen, of course, what's new about the X-E1 is the uh, electronic viewfinder. It's no longer a hybrid viewfinder. You don't have the optical options to it. But what's new, of course, is that it uses a uh, OLED display, organic LED display, which is of higher contrast and, and better color reproduction. It, it's also low power, has less power consumption as well. So you can get over 350 shots versus the Expo one, which only offers 300 shots. In addition to that, you still have the eye sensor. So when you stick your eyes up to it, it switches up to the screen. You can also manually do it by pushing the video mode or the view mode. So and it jumps up to the top, jumps back down to the LCD screen, and one more time, and becomes the eye sensors. So when you stick your eyes to it, uh, you can see um, the screen inside that. You also have the diopter adjustment as well uh, on this camera. And of course, uh, the display, of course, on it, you push the display button, you have the customized settings, just like the Expo One, fully customized display. 
You can have it without uh, sort of the SLR type of look where you have the information screen where generally you'll be using the, EV, the electronic viewfinder majority of times. And then when you, when you pull the camera out of your eyes, you quickly see the, the camera shooting settings right on the spot. So that's some modes that people kind of like to have as well. And that's just a quick look at the, uh, the, high, you know, the high quality EVF, which is a 2.3 million dots you know, EVF. So you know, it doesn't have the optical viewfinder, but the higher resolution does offer a really nice a shooting, a shooting experience uh, on this camera. Just like the X-Pro1, the X-E1 offers the TTL hot shoe that's compatible with the Fuji flashes. Of course, you have the, the EF20, uh, uh, EF42, as well as the EF-X20 flash, which is a smaller flash that looks, uh, that fits the, the styling and look of the X-Series camera. Um, in addition to that, of course, over and above the, uh, the X-Pro1, it does have a, a built-in flash. It does, uh, it's quite a small flash, so it's not going to be very strong, but it's good enough for, you know, filling in subjects uh, that are within, you know, a f six to seven feet away. Uh, generally, though, um, you know, the flash is, is not really needed for the most part because this camera has an incredible ISO. You can shoot up to, you know, generally 6400 ISO without, e without even worrying about noise. It's actually uh, very good with the X-Trans sensor. But again, you do have that built-in pop-up flash. Uh, and actually what happens when this flash is that you can actually tilt this a little bit and the flash will fire as well. So if I um, go into the Q menu and ensure that my flash is on forced flash, okay, and I take a picture, the flash does fire, so I can actually kind of bounce it up if I wanted to. Um, might be nice for when I want to trigger maybe an optical flash without adding any extra um, light to the subject itself. And again, that's just a quick look at the, uh, the flash uh, setting on the X-E1. Let's take a look at the uh, manual modes on the X-E1. We have basically the shutter speed dial as well as the aperture dial. When the lens itself this is the 18 to 55 millimeter f2.8 to f4 lens is set to A, and the shutter speed dial is set to A, then we basically have a program automatic. So the camera is going to select the proper exposure based on those settings. Okay? Uh, once you take the dial off of A from the zoom itself and put it to uh, what's called the manual aperture now, of course, this becomes the aperture controls. And if you take a look at actual the dial down here, as you can see the aperture do adjust, does adjust. And again, if I sh I'm completely wide open, it's an f2.8, and I can go all the way to up to an f22. Uh, and of course, now I put that back to A and change the dials off of the A, which is a shutter speed dial. Now I basically have shutter priority, and of course, the A shutter speeds adjust right there. And of course, I can also do um, um, one third stops uh, of shutter speeds as well using the directional pad down there. Okay. Now, if I put the if I put the camera off of A. And I put the uh, lens, the 1850mm lens setting for the aperture off, to, off of A into manual. I, I now have basically uh, I'm in manual mode itself. So both shutter speeds and aperture are controlled via the dials here as well as the dials right there. And that's just a quick look at the manual control settings on the camera. This camera offers the RAW and JPEG shooting if you wanted to. By default, I think it's set to the JPEG mode. To change that, you can just push the Q button, which is your quick access button, to various uh, options. And if you go right down to image quality and says fine, that's basically the JPEG compression. And as I rotate that, no one means it's more compressed. And then, of course, you have RAW and fine, which means RAW and JPEG shooting. RAW and normal, which is RAW with JPEG with more compression. And of course, you just have peer raw if you wanted to. So I'm just going to set it just to the peer raw mode. Uh, when you do that, you take a snapshot. Uh, it creates a raw file. It saves it, uh, of course, to the card itself. Uh, because the raw files are quite large, you want to buy yourself a very fast, uh, high-speed uh, SD card. Highly recommend at least a class 10 card. And you know, using the ultra high speed cards, it's going to make it a lot easier to take a, a bunch of burst shots if you wanted to do raw shooting. Now, the great thing with this camera is that it also has a raw conversion option. So in the playback mode, if I wanted to convert that image into a JPEG image, I can push the menu OK button, select raw Confer conversion, and actually do different options here to reflect the raw conditions I wanted to do. Where would reflect shooting conditions, whatever settings I have on the camera, it's going to copy that and create a JPEG image. 
I can do push pull processing, meaning I can actually over or under uh, expose the shot if I wanted to. I can increase or decrease dynamic range. I can set it to a certain film simulation mode if I wanted to. I'm going to leave that alone. I can adjust the white balance, the color, the sharpness. I can increase the sharpness here. And then, you know, there's a highlight, shadow, noise reduction, color spaces, um, various different options. And then when I want to create that, I can push the Q button and it creates and processes that raw file and converts that into a JPEG image right on the camera itself. If I want to store it, I push OK and it will now store that JPEG image. And again, that's just a quick look at the raw conversion software on this camera. The X1 offers uh, several auto bracketing modes. To access that, you push the dry button and then uh, using the, the directional pad, scroll down and as you can see, there's different bracketing modes. Exposure bracketing, um, there's ISO bracketing, film simulation bracketing, which you can configure so it takes multiple shots, you know, one in black and white, one in, in a different color space uh, or, or, or film simulation mode in terms of Velvia or Provia. You have dynamic range bracketing as well. So I'm, let me just show you the film simulation bracketing because it's most obvious. And again, what you do is you push one, you push the shutter button to take one photo, and it's going to process a couple other images in the other film simulation uh, options. Again, if I play back the image, as you can see, um, you can see the difference in color, uh, different uh, saturation, sharpness, and whatnot. Uh, that's just a quick look at that. There's also another mode called multi-exposure mode. And if I go into, uh, put, let's put it back right to the, uh, to the um, standard shooting mode. And I go into the menu of the camera. If I scroll down until I see um, multi-exposure, right there, I can turn it on and off. And this allows me to take multiple shots and actually uh, put them all together as one. So let's, let, let's imagine me taking a shot here with uh, the Fuji guy's uh, dummy doll bobblehead. And let's say I want to go to the next shot now, push OK. It gives me an overlay of the original shot. And now I can take a picture of maybe my little remote control that I got going on right here. So I'm going to set that up to shoot. And uh, as you can see right there, there's an overlay of the image. I can push OK. And it's going to now save that image uh, as a multi-exposure shot. If I can play that back for you right now. Um, so there we go. And as you can see, that image has sort of a dual exposure mode in it. So it's a cool little effect that you can do with the X-E1. Take a look at the focus mode on the X-E1. Of course, the camera offers uh, an autofocus system uh, with the special linear mode that's found on the 18 to 55 millimeter lens. The focusing is actually very fast, as you can see. Uh, I personally think it's, it's definitely much faster than the X-Pro1 with a prime lens. And of course, uh, now with the new firmware update, both for the x Pro 1 XE1, of course, the, the focusing is quite fast regardless of the lens you have. But because this is a linear motor, the focusing is quite fast and, 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 and very useful. Saying that, of course, a lot of customers like the ability to do, to do manual focusing, and some, some uh, adjustments have been made to improve that, of course. Uh, so let's take a, take a look at the focusing modes. On the front of the camera, you have the dial to switch from the single focus, continuous focus, and manual focus. In the, in the single focus, of course, you can change the focus points by pushing the AF button, and then using the directional pad to go left and right to select the 49 different points. You can actually shrink the point or increase the point by using the command dial, rotating left or right. And if I want to reset it to normal, I push inwards, and if I want to reset that button, that focus right to the center, I just push the OK button, and it goes right back in to the center. Um, switching it to the manual focus mode on this camera, of course, um, th that's the much improvement there that you'll see. Uh, the focusing is a lot faster. Uh, I would have to actually zoom in on something here so that you can actually see the focus adjust. As you can see, I'm rotating it. Subject's in focus. Subject's out of focus. And the great thing about this, of course, is that um, you can also push the A-E-A-E-L-A-F-L -E button to quickly focus and then fine tune the focus. Now, if you wanted a magnification, what you do is push the command dial inwards, and as you can see there, I can actually see the subject and adjust my focus. And as you can see, the focus point really adjusts really quick. As you can see, it's, it's actually very useful. And uh, with the increased sharpness with the focusing system, as well as shooting it wide open so that you can really define the, diff the depth and the focus, it uh, makes it a much easier to focus with this camera. Uh, you can actually rotate this command dial left or right, and it, it gives you a 10-time magnification, so you have 10 times. You have three times, 
and then of course pushing the button it bring, brings you back out again and yeah that's just a quick look at the focusing mode now for any street photographer you can also use the focusing guides down here by adjusting the aperture and the shutter speeds uh, or generally the apertures really you can actually uh, change the, the depth of focus uh, as you can see if I change the aperture so that it's actually an f22 and I and I change my focus points as you can see that focus white bar shows me what's in focus, and that's where my focus point is. So in this instance, if I set it to there, one meter to about two and a half meters, everything should be in focus. I can do some street photography, take snapshots without uh, you know, that delay of, of, uh, of focusing. And uh, again, that's just a quick look at the focusing modes on this camera. To access the high-speed shooting mode on this camera, you push the drive button. You can then scroll down using the directional pad until you see the continuous shooting mode. You have both six frames a second or three frames a second. Uh, both of them offer full resolution and uh, even JPEG and, uh, and uh, raw shooting if you wanted to as well. Once that's set, you just push the shutter button, uh, you know, pre-focus halfway down and snap, and it fires up to six frames a second. And when it hits to a buffer point, it starts to slow down. And uh, again, if you let go, it's then going to continue to buffer onto the card while it writes. You can then take a bunch of more shots. As you can see, it's still writing, but I can actually still take uh, uh, shots if I wanted to. Um, and as the, as the buffer clears more, you can then take a bunch more shots like that. Of course, the faster the card you have, the faster the, the, the buffer rate is, is increased so that uh, you can, uh, of course, take more shots. So that's just a quick look at the uh, continuous shooting mode. To set up the panoramic shooting mode on this camera, you push the drive button. Uh, again, you have the different drive shooting modes. I'm going to set it down to the motion panoramic mode, push OK. And of course, I can I have a couple of configurations. I can change the angles from a, a medium size to even a large. I'm just going to leave it at uh, medium just for demonstration purposes. And directionals, I can go left, right, right, left, up, down, down, up. I'm just going to leave it uh, to default again. And again, simply push the shutter button one time down. And I take multiple shots, and as I pan the camera across the room, um, it's, again, going to automatically stitch the multiple images uh, together for me. And uh, again, did a, a quick, quick job at it, and actually quite a very good job. If I push down to play that back, as you can see, it does some uh, pretty incredible panoramic stitching with this camera. Ideally, you want to put it on a tripod to keep, keep it more level, but that's just, again, a quick look at how the panoramic mode works on the XE1. To start recording HD video with this camera, you, you push the drive button. It access the uh, different drive shooting modes. I'm going to scroll down until I go down to the uh, movie mode. The camera records, of course, full HD video. I can adjust the aperture, as you can see, so I can actually get a very shallow depth of field if I want to just to blow out the background. And uh, I can also zoom during the video as well. And if I wanted to, rec to, to set the focusing to manual, I can set it to manual. And I can also manually focus during the video. So let's. Uh, let me, let me push the shutter button here to start recording my video. Again, I can zoom in, and of course, I can also adjust the, the focusing manually because uh, I've set already the manual focus. As uh, you can see, it kind of adjusts. It's kind of hard to see there, but that's just a quick look at the video mode to start recording. You push that button right there, and uh, of course, uh, um, it offers, again, full HD video with stereo sound. It does have a built-in mic, built-in speakers to, uh, to pick up audio and to play that audio back. In addition to that, if you don't want any noise to be heard from the lens, even though this is a, quite a smooth lens, there is also an option there for a mic input. So you can use an external mic, it's a 2.5 millimeter connector. If you go into the menu on the camera, um, to the setting, to the video option, of course, you'll see that uh, with the video mode, you can change it from full HD even to 720p video instead. You can also shoot in different film simulation modes, so you can shoot in black and white, Velvia, not just the standard color. There's a mic adjustment option here where you can actually adjust the mic. As you see, if it's peaking, you obviously want it to be in sort of the uh, yellow bar, which is gonna be the approximately 12 decibel uh, mark, which is standard there. And as you see, once it passes red, it's, it's peaking. So I'm just gonna leave it at two there, it sounds perfect. And of course, uh, that's just a quick look at the video option found on the XE1. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Billy. And uh, so don't forget to check out all our other videos by subscribing to our YouTube channel and following us on Twitter. And until then, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. We're the Fuji Guys.